Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's class. Um, we're here again with Grandmaster Danny King. He's very, very famous for his commentary and he likes to comment on the top high level events. He was supposed to be in the candidates, but then COVID happened. So he's been um, doing his stuff on his YouTube channel and he works for Chess Base and he's very well respected and very good at what he does. So we're very privileged to have him with us today. Uh, we're going to be looking at some very exciting pins. I like to say pin and win, but it's not that simple. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely pin and win. I love a bit of pin and win action. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll hand you over to Danny to get started. Okay, fantastic. All right, nice, nice to see you all again. Um, I recognize a few faces and a few names. That's brilliant. Yeah, please say uh, hi in the chat. Be great. Yeah, oh, the chat, hang on. Oh yeah, I've got to open up the chat. Good point. Very good point. I shall leave that open. Um, yeah, let me say hi to everyone. Yeah. Say hi and we'll get started. That's good. Okay, fantastic. Okay, as a, as a little um, icebreaker, um, I'll discuss the, the, the main theme in a second, but this position is a bit ludicrous, but it is white to play and mate in Two. You share your screen, please. Here we go. White's playing mating two. Bit of a I mean, white white is a queen and a rook up, which helps. <laughs> uh, but you've got to the the problem is you've got to check mating two moves. You've got to force a check mating two moves. Oh, it's all gone very quiet. Does someone want to put up their hand, or I don't know. Yeah, we need some interaction, and I uh, see Harry's drawing all over the screen because he's taking it. Harry's drawing over the screen. Oi, get off, Harry. I always take these settings off, but I just must be... <laughs> uh, no, don't draw on the screen. How cheeky. He's got a moustache on, and he's drawing over the screen. <laughs> Listen, I don't mind you drawing over your face, but not on my chessboard, thank you very much, Harry. That was. I, I, I'm going to have to yell a card you next time something like that, that happens. Oh, do you want to get in? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Let's let's get chatting then. How do we get the mate in two? You can raise your hand. We're very happy to unmute you. You can say your answer. This is a good warm up. So good idea. It, yeah. I do I forget anyone solved it yet, so that might be the reason for the silence. Oh, I see. I'm surprised. Checkmate in two moves. Come on, guys. Oh, that's all right. It's it's a bit weird because, um, you know, people are just used to winning um, and not having a stipulation. Oh, I can see. Coral would like to say something. Frankie. Who, who'd like to say something? Uh, Coral's got a, her hand up. So, yeah, would you like to speak, Coral? You should be able to unmute yourself now. Hello. Um, I thought Queen C six. Queen C six. B pawn takes. Yeah, B pawn takes C six, and then Rook checkmates on B eight. Perfect. Ooh, yeah, excellent. really, really well done, Coral. Um, so that Queen, of course, you know, White has a million ways to to win this position, uh, but the way to force a checkmate in two moves. So I'm just resizing all the windows. That's better is queen c6, which is a beautiful move. So remember that the theme of today's session is pin and win. And we've got absolutely loads of pins in this position. If pawn takes, as Coral rightly points out, then rook b8 is checkmate. So that's one pin. This is another pin. That's also checkmate in two. And I suppose that's a kind of pin because after that, Queen a4 is mate. Does anyone know the name of this kind of checkmate? Or something, a mate that's similar to this? You sometimes see it with a with a rook at the side of the board as well, after a queen sack. Does anyone know the name of that checkmate? Hands up. No, nobody? Kenneth said Anastasia. Uh, well done. Anastasia mate. Yeah, well done, Kenneth. So I've only just seen it in the chat. Yeah, brilliant. Anastasia's checkmate. Excellent. Normally with the king here and the, the knight controlling those two squares. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to give you one more little puzzle and then I'll get into talking about my topic, pin and win. 
Okay, here's the next one. Can everyone see that? Um, I, once again, white to play and checkmate in two moves. White is so many pieces up. It's kind of ridiculous, but the problem is checkmate in two moves. Okay, got to get it right. Not three, not four, not one. Checkmate in two. This requires a bit of brain power. Well, we got Charlie wants to come in. Admit, okay. Oh yeah, I'll let him in. Yeah, what's what's hard about these is they're not that this group like they focus on like forcing moves, checks, captures, but these moves are not forcing move. That, well, they they are forcing, but they're not checks. So that's what makes them harder. Well, yeah, but but also I think it's about um, recognizing checkmating patterns. I think yes. that's the the key with these. Um, prob problem chess where you have a certain you have to mate in a certain number of moves um got so a few they, are, hands they, up here. they are a bit different are there a few hands up like how do i see the hands up um, if you click on participants you can see so we've got row here ah. michelle and rowan so who would you like to pick out oh. of those three right i shall pick uh we haven't had rowan yet have we uh nope so go ahead rowan you should be able to speak now um rook h3 check Rook H3 check. Now, okay, let's try and work this out. Does that actually work? Because what about, okay, king takes rook. You need to checkmate in one move. Uh, that means I can do... Though it's not there, unfortunately. There's no checkmate in one. Okay, so it's not that one. Okay, let's take one of the others. Okay, Rohit, would you like to let us know your answer? Yeah. Would it be queen H1? Oh, Rohit, what a star, what a star. And what a beautiful move. The longest move on the board. Queen A8 A8 to H1. And that is how you checkmate in two. Black only has one legal move. King here. Rohit, keep going. He's just muted himself. Hang on. Um, right, Rohit, do you want to tell us the checkmate in one now? And would it be H4? It is. And you see, it's checkmate because there's a pin. Can't take it en passant. So what a beautiful move. Queen A8 to H1. It's the only way to force mating two. Beautiful. Okay, moving on to the main dish of the day. <laughs> so here we go. Um, oh, let's, let's not see the notation. So... I wanted to discuss what happens when bishop comes to g5, which is such a common move. You know, it's often a pin. Whoops, I misfired, as usual. Um, when there's an item on f6, it's often a pin. And sometimes you have to know whether to exchange off bishop for knight, whether to retreat the bishop. Um, and, and, you know, when you're defending against that, you know, what kind of things do you have to look out for? So... This session is going to be all about that pin on G5 and a few other bits and pieces as well. And the strategies that are associated with that. And this, this is actually a really complex strategy. But I, I can tell you, when I started to understand this, my rating really shot up. Because there are a few key ideas here that will stand you in such good stead. So... If, even if it doesn't sound thrilling now, I'll tell you what, this session could change your life. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There is stuff here today, which I learned when I was in, in my teenage years that, you know, I've used right throughout my career. So you're getting in early, basically. Now, I was white here. I was playing against my mate, Joe Gallagher. Okay, what's the name of this opening system for white? Okay, who haven't we heard from yet? Um, raise your hand if you'd like to say what opening this is. What's, what variation am I playing with white? We like everyone to take part in these sessions, so please do answer some questions for us. Charlie, are you brave enough to say that verbally? <laughs> Go on then, Charlie. Tell us what opening it is. I've lost the chat. Uh, 
Damn, I I've think... got too many windows open. <laughs> Is it the Vetti Troy? Uh, no, didn't it start with the Vet Vetti and then um, go into hit? He did the King's Indian defense. Yeah, it's it. Okay, it started off as a Retty, but yeah, basically we've transposed into a King's Indian. But it's this particular variation with C three, D four knight, and you know, C three knight F three and Bishop G five. It's it's obviously we're in a King's Indian basically. Um, the the Retty usually just transposes into something else. But what's the name when you play an early Bishop G five with C three? Do you know Torre that? Attack. Yeah, so the the, the Torre basically. And this is a very respectable system for white. So here we go. You see, instead of having a pawn on c4 and playing like that, you, you leave the pawn on c3. So this is a strong pawn chain. And you still take the center. OK, let's try and make the next move. c5. Right, what are we going to do about that? What would you play as white? Let's have some suggestions. Yeah, tell us in the chat or raise your hand. Um, right, we've got a suggestion from Frankie and Charlie. Frankie wants to play Bishop D3. Charlie wants to play Rook C1. I think the thing is, if you leave that pawn there, let's say like this, then black can actually get pretty good pressure against this one. And you're also open to attack with knight b4. It's actually quite difficult for white to control that. So in this position, and, and I guess the same goes for, for rook c1 as well. In this position, the best move is actually to take here. And then you can choose where to play the bishop, but c4 is a nice act active square um but i didn't do that i played pawn to d5 i like my space um but do you notice with the pawn on c3 protected by the pawn on b2 that cuts out this bishop so the bishop isn't quite as effective and that's the strategy that i should be employing okay bishop here Knight here, and now I played a4 because I didn't want him expanding with b5. I'll, I'll get to another question in a second. Okay, pawn to e6. Here, I should take that pawn. But I played c4, and, and even now I look at this and I think I don't like that move. Because, you know, the whole point of playing b2 and c3 was to blunt that bishop. You know, that King's Indian bishop is a really strong piece. So c4 basically is illogical. Right. Over to you. How should black play in this position? How basically, well, I, I won't say any, anything more, actually, not, not for the moment. So I'm looking for a little plan for black. What would you do next? I'm not looking for one move, just a, a little plan. What's, what's next for black? Frankie says definitely a6 and b5 even if it means giving up a pawn and maybe rook b8 well I understand Frankie I understand totally what you mean this is such a common strategy in these kind of openings particularly in combination with that bishop on g7 the only thing I would say is that after a6, I think white has quite a good move. What should white play here? Frankie, well done. You are uh, answering your own questions here. And Kushal, well done as well. a5 is actually quite good because it means that when black plays rook b8 and then b5 or b6, then white will take. And actually, it's pretty easy to defend that pawn. You know, it'll just move to to b3 and that's not so clever basically you know it's potentially a weak pawn here i quite like white's position actually so i don't think that a6 is the right move uh, from kenneth we've got a strategy of e5 queen e8 
and maybe the knight moves in f5. Now that's interesting, uh, but we should probably look at what happens in the game. Uh, we'll see about that. And from Charlie, Charlie's suggesting h6, pushing the bishop and then g5. Charlie, spot on, fantastic. Basically this pin is a bit annoying. It's not the end of the world, but actually it's good to clear this up. So Charlie, your idea is absolutely correct with black. If you play pawn to h6, now bishops are so important. You would never want to exchange here as white. That's disastrous because it means that bishop on g7 has no opponent. That is such a strong piece. And basically black claims the dark squares. You can see, look at that light squared bishop. It's blocked in by its own pawns. That bishop is an absolute monster on g7. So basically white should just drop back. And now really interesting, g5, excellent. And then again, another excellent move, knight h5, which hits the bishop, can be useful to take that. As we've said, knocking out that important dark square bishop means that this one is a monster. Um, and already I think black is doing pretty well. My opponent didn't do that, but he should have done it. And in this kind of position, you don't need to worry too much about the pawn coming to g5, because that bishop defends very well, and the queen is over on this side of the board. But in this position, instead of that, my opponent played pawn to e5. So this is a really typical King's Indian pawn structure now with this sort of locked center. I castled. Okay, what now for black? Any thoughts? How should black play here? Black to play. What should you do and why? Charlie says, do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, Charlie? That's exactly what my opponent did. <laughs> he played G5. Um, or, or Charlie says, go for the knight B4 outpost. That's also what my opponent did, but a bit later on in the game. So, well, you're doing as well as my opponent. But your opponent lost. <laughs> but your opponent got stuffed. <laughs> yeah. We're about to find out the difference. Harry's going, play G5. <laughs> okay. So the crowd are baying for G5. You're just a bunch of hooligans, aren't you? You're just a bunch of hackers. You're going for it. Oh, now, Kenneth, before we, I, I will move on. Um, Kenneth says Queen E8. Do you know what, Kenneth? That is actually a very good suggestion. I really like that. And that's a way of breaking the pin. Um, and it means you can play the knight to h5. Now, this is this is a beautiful outpost for the knight. If you can get to f4, that's really nice. But also, it makes way for the pawn to come to f5. You could also play, let's say, knight h7 and then f5. Then the bishop could be in trouble. So, yeah, queen e8, I like a lot. Very well done. I think that's the, the best move in the position, actually. But, yeah, my opponent, Joe, he likes to attack. And he played g5. Like, I can see a lot of you like to play g5 as well. Okay, so he played his knight here. Now, what I would like to do is open up that line and take that. So what happens if I play knight, knight e5? Good move or bad move? Rohan's got his thumbs down. He doesn't, Rohan doesn't like it. It's a terrible move, isn't it, Rohan? Yeah, well done, Kushal as well. Bad, says Harry, in capital letters. Bad, bad, <laughs> bad. super bad. Yeah, it is super bad because we can take here. 
and yeah basically you just lose a piece so unfortunately the tactic doesn't work okay so my opponent wanted to sort of throw his knight in here hmm so is it time to get terrified here was i quaking at the board was i thinking oh my god he's gonna roll me away on the king side no this is exactly what i wanted him to do this is when I started rubbing my hands with glee, going, ha ha, I've got him. Okay, so what do you play as white? Got one suggestion from Charlie, which is knight e1. I actually rather like knight e1. It's, it's not the move I played, but I like knight e1. What's, Charlie, what's, what's the big idea behind knight e1? Wait to take should, that I knight. Leave, <laughs> I should leave him play it. Yeah, to take the knight, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is it as deep as that charlie <laughs> it might be it might be maybe he's writing you raise your hand if you want to speak anyone oh okay charlie well done yeah excellent charlie's saying if knight takes then f takes very interesting you get some control over this and then you can maneuver the knight round to e3 to get even better control. Really nice idea. I think the only thing is, I wonder about putting the knight on f4. I think that's stronger. And then it's not quite so clear. But it, it's a very interesting idea. I, I don't think it's a bad move at all. I didn't do that. Any other ideas? I did. I mean, in a way, I did something a little bit similar. It's related to that. And I think knight e1 is all right. Any more thoughts? Knight b3, says Archie. Where's that knight going? I'm not quite sure where it's going next. What's, what's your idea, Archie? c1 and e2 uh-huh where's it going from e2 hmm don't know i'm not sure where it's going from e2 mysterious yeah very mysterious okay i'm going to put that one back interesting frankie says bishop c2 or bishop b1 that's not bad. It's nice to preserve that bishop. And in fact, my bishop did actually go back there uh, in a little bit. Rahul. Oh, I think Rahul's in, a, in animal mode. <laughs> he took, he wants to take here. Okay, so you want, you want me to take back with the bishop, don't you? Yeah. Well, I wasn't born yesterday. I think that's an extra piece. Rahul, sorry. Um, and then we've got a suggestion of h4. Very good. I quite like h4. I think it might be a little bit risky. Um, it came later on, but it's an interesting move. Maybe bishop g4. Yeah, not not quite so clear. Um, Harry, I'd like Archie, to do that as well. <laughs> Harry, the Archie, Archie gets the gold medal, I think. Rookie one, well done. Uh, yeah, Rohan, uh, sorry, Rohan is actually saying h3. Thing is, I actually don't need to move my pawns. If you don't need to move pawns in front of your king, don't touch them. Because here, I'm not worried about pawn to g4, because that knight is just going to hop into h4 and then to f5. f5 is the key square here. And that's what rookie one is about. So Charlie Arch would like to say something. Would it be all right for him to just say something before we move on? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. Charlie, go ahead. Hi, Daniel. Um, Hi. Uh, I was just, the main problem with knight f4 in my eyes is that he's attacking the, the bishop d3 rook. And the fact that we've got no pawns on the third rank, I was thinking maybe a rook lift on a3. So maybe rook a3. In this position, I think after knight e1, he's talking about uh, oh. no, no, just, just here. Oh. Oh, I was talking just about here. just here, v rook h, ah. uh, rook a3, rook a3. Or, or king h1. Do you, do you know what, 
do you know what, Charlie? I actually played Rook A3 later. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So... I haven't got the game off, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, if we go back, I played Rook E1 with exactly the idea that um, Archie mentions, which is to play the knight to F1 and then into E3. You've also got to watch out for F5 here. Because my bishop is here, I'm actually not worried about f5. Well, let's deal with that straight away. How would you react to f5? Frankie says, just take. It's so simple. Yeah, and then keep then keep going, Frankie. You're doing fine. Keep going. Can I meet you if you want, Frankie? Yeah, let, let's hear um, from Frankie. Well, the e4 square is a bit of a hole now, something like knight e4. Definitely, yeah. But I'm not really sure. I'll yeah, take yeah. Him in the knight e4. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be very sophisticated here. Basically, if there's no f pawn to drive the knight out of the way, then the f then the the knight is beautifully placed on e4. Basically, white just has a huge positional advantage. It's as it's as simple simple as that. So yeah, that's good. Don't need to go any further. This pawn isn't threatening. The big thing is to kill that bishop, basically. So the knight blockades. Well done. Um, okay, so so rookie one played. He came in knight f4. Now, very often in this situation where you've got a rook here, you want to play bishop f1 just to defend the this pawn here but actually in this situation then f5 could be annoying because here you know the bishop has come out and black can challenge that e4 square so i think it was really important i put my bishop back here for the same reason that after f5 i can exchange everything and plonk a knight on e4 okay knight a6 So I'm going to continue with my plan. All I want to do is control that square. And remember, if he plays g4, this is exactly what I want. I could put the knight here, and then the knight goes to, to f5 with fantastic control. Once I play knight here, then I've got two knights looking at the f5 square. It's absolutely killing. Black's attack, well, black doesn't have an attack, basically. <laughs> Knight here, I'm controlling the square. Rook b8. And now I played Charlie's move. Because I could sense basically he played rook b8. This is going nowhere. And I've stymied his play on the king side. I've tempted him into playing g5, which weakens this square. So basically, I'm looking to attack on the king side. H4 is going to come soon, but I thought if things are going to explode on the king side, I'm going to play my rook here. Charlie, well done. Um, A6. What's the move here? You should know this. <laughs> the same as I did before. Okay, I don't need to say it as a question. Okay, B5 could be a bit annoying, but once you play this move, this is what happened, a5, b6, takes, and rook takes. Actually, he can't do anything. You know, if anything, this could be a weak pawn here. Right, white to play. What now? Anybody, anybody want to have a go? Watch your white play here. Uh, Charlie says he still really wants the knight f5 outpost. Yeah, I mean, I think knight f5 is just a good move because if this is taken, then those light squares, oh my word, this is, then this bishop starts to look quite menacing. What I would like to do, well, okay, let me make a random move for, for I, I don't know, I'll play here. What should white do next after that? 
What's what's a plan for white here? Yeah, I'm looking for a move. Archie wants to take here. I'm not sure about that because after this, do you see that bishop turns into an absolute screamer again? Um, that is a beautiful piece. So I want to make sure that that bishop stays blocked behind that pawn. And, and if nothing else, you know, if he wants to get it going again, then he's got to give up a pawn, which I'll happily take. But do you see how that really helps Black in this position, gives him real freedom? Harry would like to say something. Go ahead, Harry. Um, I in this in this position. Yes. My idea would be to there are different options. Um, I have two options. Two. Yeah. Two. Okay. Give me your. Tell you what. Out of those two options, give me your best one. Okay, I'll give you my what? No, I'll give you my best one. Um, what one that I think is best is. Your ideas are so good, you can't work out which is best. <laughs> Come on, Harry, give me a move. Okay, um, my idea and my best idea is knight d2. Knight d2, as Charlie said, and Archie said. So well yeah, done to knight all d2 of you. To try and go to e4 which is an extremely strong outpost, controlling the f6 square, blocking the e pawn, which is the pawn. And if if they're if they are allowed to push that pawn, then their bishop will just steam open and potentially take that pawn and annoy your rook. Absolutely. And gain lots of tempos. Yeah, I think 92, as uh, Charlie and Archie pointed out, with the idea of playing 94. That is such a powerful move because that knight just kind of looms over the ramparts here, right into, into Black's bishop. Once he gets to e4, blockading that pawn, then the bishop is completely dead. And, you know, you've always got a chance to maybe push here. Looks really good. So I think this is an excellent strategy. Well done. Really well done to, to all three of you. Um, Frankie was suggesting Bishop E4 blocking. Frankie, I also really like that move. Well done. Excellent. It, same story. Block, blockades this one. Um, and there are other ways to make progress here. Notably playing pawn to H4. You know, that's going to be a way to actually break open Black's king side. Uh, so Bishop E4 is excellent as well. I think I would slightly prefer knight d2, and the, the reason is this, that it could well bring that rook into play somewhere along the third rank. And also that knight on e4 just looks at those key squares, basically. But anyway, excellent suggestions from everyone. So knight, knight f5 is, is very good. I actually played pawn to h4, which has kind of been in the air for a long time. I thought it was start, uh, time to start opening him up. Um, if he plays pawn here, well, I could go back to d2. I could play knight h2. I'm not quite sure which is best. I don't know. What do you think? What, how do you think white should play here? Any thoughts? White play. Archie wants to play knight h2. So does Kushal Rohit. Rohit says it wins a pawn. Does it win a pawn? Okay, we're attacking that one, but what, what if black defends it? We're getting close to winning a pawn. What next? There's a move that I have in mind, which I would really like to play. Ryan wants to play knight d2. I think knight d2 is as good as knight h2. Harry suggested f3 here. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, Frank is suggesting that as well. F3, absolutely. Let's let's just crack him open because I think you know once we once we get the queen into play, I think 
the king is in massive trouble here. So basically, you could have this position with the knight on d2 or h2. And yeah, we, we're going to take here soon enough. The knight's going to come to f5. The rook is going to swing over. It looks absolutely fantastic for white. Okay, very good. So my opponent played rook e8. I took. And I put the knight back here. So I'm still looking to play knight f5. And I'm preparing to get that knight into e4 if it's taken. But after knight f5, I can also play the queen into g4. So you can see how you know I'm starting to get the attack, basically. Coral, so, we want to say something if that's all right. Yeah, please. Coral, go ahead. Um, I didn't. I can't remember the position it was in that I they applied to. So I didn't ca quite catch that. You wanted to. It was in a different position just now, but by the time I got my hand up, it moved, and it doesn't apply to this position. Oh, okay. okay. No don't don't worry. We'll we'll move Sorry. on. We'll, don't worry. It's fine. Okay. So bishop here, knight f five. There you go. This has been my strategy since I played the bishop to g five. I wanted to tempt him to play g five, which all these King's Indian hackers they all do that. <laughs> They're all brutes. They all want to push a pawn. But in this position, the best move for black is to put the pawn back on g6 and cheat. I wouldn't recommend it. But actually, if black could choose to put the pawn back, then he would to get rid of that knight. But pawns can't move backwards. I'm afraid everyone forgets it. So now I'm ready to move the queen in. OK, here we go. Bishop takes. Knight here. This is just dream position. You can see he can do absolutely nothing. So now I'm threatening that pawn, and he played f6. Ugly, isn't it? Super ugly. Oh my god, look at those pawns with a bishop behind it. This is just a dream position. Okay, we still got to kill him off. So white to play, what would you do? There's more than one good move here. But what's next? Oh, yeah, Sarah, I've just seen you asking. Anyone play the King's India? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them said they used to, but they've given it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're about to give it up. <laughs> Frankie says, Fra really interesting idea, Frankie. Um, king h2, rook h1, and then put the king back to g1. Yeah, getting the rook to the open h file, I think, could be really, really strong. Charlie, very good. Um, Bishop h2. Bishop h2, well done, and g3. That's what I did. Well done, Charlie. But I think, like I said, there's more than one good continuation. I was just really greedy, and I wanted to play bishop h2 and, and trap the knight. But Frankie, I really like your idea of king h2 and rook h1, and then king back to g1. Because actually, we could take here and then get rook number two over, which would be really cool. And then down the h file. Yeah, good stuff, everyone. Um, so bishop h2, now he's in trouble. Ah, yeah, if I play g3 now, I think he puts the knight back here because there's a pin. Yeah, sneaky. So that's why I protected the queen. So I'm now I'm still threatening g3. So he just gave up a knight, but that's pretty rubbish. So now I'm a piece up. Now it's very easy. Okay, he resigned here. Now he's he's a piece down, but you know, and everything's going white's way. I'm I'm ready to play knight d5 and, and get him here. So um Let's just have a, a very quick recap of that game. Um, if I get to the right position, here we go. So I want to go right back to this position. So he played h6, which is, I think, a good move.
But do you see the difference between playing g5 and then knight h5? Because the bishop's diagonal is still open. And that pawn actually covers f5. That's good for black. The way he did it, because he was a King's Indian player, he felt very comfortable with these setups with the closed pawn structure. But now I was desperate for him to play g5 and thankfully he did. And this is just good for white. Even though this looks really impressive, there is a huge hole at f5, which yes, it can be exploited like this, um, or as I did in the game like this as well. Basically get a knight here. And these positions with the pawn on f5, you exchange and you can still put the knight on e4 as well. So you see the huge difference when that f5 square is available. Okay, Sarah, I think it's about time we got them playing some chess. Um, <laughs> let's go from whoop, this position. Now, this is a reti. But actually, if you notice what I'm doing, I had this position with black. I'm actually playing a Tory attack in reverse. You see, it's exactly the same. In my game against Gallagher, my pawn was already here. But of course, with black, I'm a tempo down. Charlie says, was this in a tournament? Yeah, both these games were in a tournament. Yeah. Okay, I've put the pairings in the chat. And then I'm going to put the link to the game. Those of you that have done these classes before will know how we do it. Um, Coral, I know you've got to go at some point, um, so I don't know if you what time you're going. But we've got the um, we've got a good engine um, that plays like a human that you might want to play against because we do have an odd number, unfortunately, um, because someone had to pull out at the last minute. But um, yeah. hopefully that's all all right for you. So just share with each other your Lee Chess usernames, and I'm going to share my screen now and explain what you need to do. So move over to my screen, coming off Danny's now. So this is the position that you're playing out. It's white to play. Yep. So I'll put the link in the chat and I'll show you how to do it if you haven't done it already. Um, it'll take a couple of minutes where people kindly share their Lee Chess users with their opponent. So that's the position. And all you need to do is you click continue from here, play with a friend and then choose the time control. In fact, I don't think Danny and I discussed what we should give them. Um, what do you think, five, three, maybe? Five, two, um, three. Yeah, okay. Or quicker, right, it's up to you. I mean, we do have a break at three, actually. So we've got 15 minutes, so. Do you, do you want to be strict about that break or do you want to, you know, do it at five past or? Yeah, I don't mind. It's completely up to you. Um, Let, let's, let's make the break, because I, I went on a bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> was... um, let, let's make the break at, um, let's say five past. Okay. So maybe that gives a little bit more time to play, you know, a proper game. So we could say, I don't know. Um, or I mean, it might they might have a chance to play two games or something like that. What yeah. So think? are we thinking like five two, or are we thinking slower? Yeah, maybe five five three. Okay. And and if they fit in a couple of games, that'd be brilliant. Okay, perfect. So when you get to this stage, you select 5-3. Um, you're playing it with white and black against your opponent, whether you manage to do that before the break or after the break. We don't know at this point, probably before the break, because that we've got yeah. um, yeah, I've got enough time. We've got about 20 minutes. So you can select random side because you're going to be playing one with white, one with black. So click that and then invite your opponent. So um, Coral, if you are staying, um, you just your opponent is going to be the bot, the my five's a good bot, so don't worry about playing against there. I like this bot as opposed to Stockfish because it plays human moves. Like if you're winning, they don't just give up. They actually try and they're resilient. Um, but if you're playing against another opponent, just put their username in here. Um, and then it just they have to accept. And as soon as they accept, the game starts. So let's go back. Um, that's the process. Anyone that has any problems... I aborted it because I, I was challenging Alex and I don't think he even knows that I was going to challenge him. I think he's getting ready to watch the Formula One qualifying. So <laughs> <laughs> bit of an addict with that. Um, 
<laughs> the truth the truth is out <laughs> yeah completely um i'll kenneth as well <laughs> he's absolutely obsessed with yeah, he has to write down all the lap times so i just <laughs> watching the race <laughs> oh my goodness that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so just a reminder, everyone, it's white to play in this position. And um, try to bear in mind what I was talking about in, in, you know, in, in that last game. Obviously, there are similarities in the position. If you could put the link to your game in the chat, then I'll get all the games up on my screen and um, we can just flick between them. And Danny and I will make some small comments and then we'll actually go through them after the break. Brilliant. Okay. So I've got one. Thanks for that, Charlie. Um, so yeah, if you could all share that, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. casual's fine. Don't do a rated game because we're just learning today. It's not not supposed to be competitive, although we're all competitive, really, aren't we? <laughs> we all want to win. <laughs> um, so can I just click on that link and and, and spectate the game? Um yeah, you could. Yeah, exactly. Um, I will have them on my screen, so it's completely up to you. Okay. Um, um, okay. Yeah, let me get it. I'll get a preview. <laughs> the link, um, Frankie, if you click on the link, I'll just click on it myself Oh, hang on. Now. You've, you've set the... Um, uh, you've set the Jocker Piano position. Oh, sorry. Did I do the wrong one? <laughs> sorry. Oh, listen, I... listen, it doesn't matter. We could we can play from that. Sorry. The, this is the one I was supposed to do, wasn't it? Was this one? Yeah, but but listen, Sarah, don't don't worry. Listen, they, they've started on that, um, and that's a good starting point. Okay, yeah, this one's for later. Sorry, I had two prepared. Yeah, like, yeah but it really doesn't matter. Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You've got another one to play later, and that is the one that Danny was talking about. Apologies, but well done for noticing. Frankie, <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone else noticed. <laughs> it was it was a test. We did it deliberately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so game links in the chat, please, so that I can get them open on my screen. So I've only got Charlie against Rahul on my screen. Thanks, Rohit. I've got your game now. I'm expecting to have a few more. Oh, thanks, Rowan. Oh, that link didn't work. Um, do you want to post it again, please, Rowan, because that didn't work. Yeah, you'll be trying the other training position later on in the session. Thanks, Harry. And Rowan, so one, two, three. Is that one over there? Four. I think I've got four now. I think I'm expecting five. Thanks, Archie. I oh, know that's... That's not your game, that's the training position. So, who are we missing? Um, should I stop sharing or have you taken over? Um, I've taken you off. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Um, so, I'm just checking. Coral, are you um, still here and have you got your game up? Thanks. Oh, yeah, sorry. How do you change from Stockfish to Myra? I'll just go through that again, Coral. Um, have I got the link up on my screen? So it was this one that I gave you, wasn't it? So you click continue from here, play with a friend. You have to imagine that Maya is actually um, a human, like a friend. So five, three, do that. And then um, Maya is your opponent. So you just type it in here, um, Maya five, and it comes up the bot. And then you just click on that and then you'll be ready. Hopefully that will work, Coral. And then you can send us the link to your game, please. Okay, so I'm just trying to work out who's... So I've got Charlie's game, I've got Rowan's game, I've got Harry's game. And so I've got Dangerous Kid. So I'm just missing a couple. Let me just check what's my pairings. Okay, shall we flick through? So... How do we share a game link? If you just go to the top and then just um, copy and paste the link. Otherwise, just uh, remind me your username and I can search for it myself. I haven't memorized everyone's usernames. You just have to have simple usernames like mine. Mine's just Sarah Longson. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got that game now. So perfect. Okay. Let's have a look how they're getting on. 
from this position. So, oh, and no. thanks, Carol. We've got everyone's games now. Sorry, I'll go back to that. Right, Danny, so this is um, how this one's started. Oh, G5 was played and now Bishop takes G5. Oof. Oh, hang on. Let me just... Oh, that's better. Now, now I've got it. Wow. Um, just okay, so to... we're looking at... I we're looking at Charlie Chess. Yeah. Rahul. Oh. But, um, wow. oh, this, is all, this is all kicking off. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. I was just looking at Knight takes G5 as an alternative, but Bishop takes G5 has happened. And it really is kicking off here. Oh, I think, uh, you know, I'm, can, can they hear us? Yeah, they can hear us. Unless oh, they turn us off. <laughs> I, I've got to be really careful about what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, Rahul, how are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at his clock. I can tell from his clock time that he's a bit nervous. But that's yeah. good that he's taking his time. True, true. Looking on the bright side. Well done. <laughs> Oh, he's uh, done bishop takes f2 as a rebound. Bishop f2. Wow. And now how is he going to solve the problems? <laughs> Let's move on. So have a look at another game. Okay. Um, so this is row hit against Rowan. This looks like a really sensible game. Yep. Oh, the bishop went back. <laughs> Tanya and I were discussing this earlier and I said, oh, I would never move that bishop back. It'd be such a waste putting the bishop on g5 and then going back. But Danny actually said, yeah, but it's it's not a bad move at all. <laughs> Maybe very prudent. Who knows? I just think, couldn't bring myself to move <laughs> Yeah, <back>. I know. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, yeah, this is a very sensible game. So they've both got equal time, so that's going to be quite a battle, I think. Yeah, that looks very tense. Harry against Kushal here. Oh, this look also looks pretty good. How do we get here? Let's have a look. Yeah, good chess. Yeah. Harry's going for the attack as usual. He's a great attacking player. <laughs> Bringing that knight round. Yeah. Okay, that looks really interesting. I think not bad at all. Okay, let's move on then. This is um, Kenneth against Frankie. And we'll go to the start. Ah. Mm. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So it's, did you say it's Kenneth with white? Um, Kenneth is white, yes. Yeah, okay. It's quite, quite a battle. And then we've yeah. got... Oh, what's happened to you? I see a queen Ooh, fork. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Back, see what happened. Ah. Whoa, F5. Oof. I was looking at we could do knight takes e5 and then knight takes c6 after bishop g4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feel, feels like something is on in this position. But it looked like the queen dropped a few meters. Ah, oh, it's black's move. Ooh. Ah. I have a feeling there was a tic tac there. Hmm. But yeah, another one turned Ouch. up. Okay, fighting back, showing resilience. And this is. Um, so I've got a new link here because Coral's just playing against Maya. And, oh, I can't see any more moves. Uh, Coral, I don't know whether there was a problem there. It keeps aborting my games. Um, okay, that's strange, Coral. Um, shouldn't be happening. Uh, why don't you... I have no idea. I've never experienced that before. Why don't you try playing against... Um... Do you want to play against Stockfish then? Maybe that's more sensible. It usually does work against Maya, but maybe maybe I've not tried against Maya five before. You could try the harder Maya bot. I just really like Maya because Maya plays like human moves. <laughs> yeah, but it, I think it leapt from G five to E five, which is a bit strange. Oh yeah, what's happened? Yeah, maybe it's starting mm. position slightly wrong. Um, do you want to try try using the link that we put in the chat? Um, otherwise, Coral, we can get you to play against somebody when they finish. Uh, apologies for the odd number. Someone had to drop out at the last minute because of a county game. I think there's a county battle going on today. Okay. 
Okay, so this let's go back to oh, Rahul's. Oh, oh, white white piece up. Oh right. <laughs> Okay, but at least he somehow survived because it did look. Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah, that should be all right for white. Let's move on then here. Oh, this is very close. Hmm. Now, who's better? I don't know. <laughs> Which color would you rather play? Um, I'd say white. I like these positions. I like bishops, but I think it's fairly equal. I also like the fact that we could get the G file. Bit of dominance yeah. on there. So yeah, I'd probably be white. What about you? Yeah, I think I'd go white as well. But actually, I think this is quite an important move. Mm. Maybe black's got a chance to defend. No pressure, Rohit. <laughs> yeah, big, big move. Big decision here. G6. Wow. Taking the fight to his opponent. That's interesting. I'd still take white, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, but no, I think but G six is really interesting. Hmm. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting into that position. That's there's a lot. I think there's a lot to it. Yeah. Okay. So Harry again. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, what's you, happened? Said, you said that Harry likes tacking and that knight has <laughs> in. Very cheeky, look. At, yeah. He won't be looking at my screen, so these are his plans now. So can we defend is the question to Kush. Oof. I, in this game, I think I prefer black. <laughs> but I think I'll, I'll jump on that bandwagon. Um, yeah. Looks a bit scary. It certainly does. I'm probably gonna try this one next. Mm. Okay. Well, well spotted, but, but there's some, I'm not saying it out loud, but there's some idea. <laughs> looks, yeah, some tasty stuff going on. And white. No, that, actually, this looks like a really good game by Black. Yeah. Now, Harry um recently beat a GM in a blitz match, so you know, oh. scary opponent. Very. I can tell, especially when he's wearing a moustache. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, well, this one looks like it's... Uh, okay. Two rooks There's a queen, but... Oh, uh, yeah. Harry's taking his time. He's looking for the big kill. He's looking for a clean kill. Is it there? I don't know. Well, wasn't expecting that. But maybe, nice. Maybe his thinking is better than mine. <laughs> I, I, I think I would have just whipped off the queen, but um, maybe that was a better move, queen d3. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it just gains a tempo, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, I, that, that is a beautiful move. Yeah, that is brilliant. Okay, well, we're going to go through the games later. Um, so if you finish your game, have a rematch, um, and then we'll take a break after the rematch, and then we'll go through the game. So Danny and I yeah. won't to make too many comments. All right, let's look at this one. This is, I'd say this is our, our top board game, Frankie against, um, sorry, Kenneth against Frankie. And these are both. Oh, this looks really like a very sensible game. Yeah, they're both very strong players. But they're very short on time, but I don't think that doesn't bother Dangerous Kid because he managed. I've saw, saw him recover a game the other day with hardly any time left. <laughs> dangerous Kid. I know he is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, Frankie's only a GM. <laughs> yeah, if you're playing a rematch, um, send me your links to the rematch. Let's go back to that game where we we're just looking at. Might as well see this one to the end. Yeah, Harry, can you send me the link to your new game? Then we can go for all the games after the break. Thank you. I think we'll stick with this because it looks like it's going to finish soon due to the clock time. Oh, Bishop C6. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know if that was forced, uh, but 
Um, it's it's um, that's mm. quite an interesting pawn uh, exchange sack. Yeah. Because of that pawn on b5 just kind of locks everything in. There yeah. you go. Sorry, I didn't, I shouldn't say. <laughs> we, we just get yeah, I think right. it was an obvious move, to be, to be fair yeah. <laughs> to myself. Um, yeah, big compensation. This, this one, it's going to go either way, actually. <laughs> That's right. I can't think. Okay, who, who would you prefer to play? Why I was just trying to work that out because I'm a bit I'm a bit greedy. I like material, but I also <laughs> like White's position a lot here. Um, but I don't know if it's enough. I think I would actually take black because I'm greedy. But I um, oh yeah, is it is it evened out now? I think it has. Um, or is black yeah. better? I yeah, think I was black's just better. Thinking that myself, I think black's I'm. Better. Oh my gosh! One move now, right? Black's better. Oh, I feel, yeah. I can yes. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, Frankie's turned it around. Or maybe he, was, he always had it under control. Oh, always, always under control. Don't know what that king is doing on h7. To wait, so. maybe he was scared about going to g5 in case there was some mate, but the pawn yeah. on e5 just, I mean, I love these pawns. Look how good they are. Oof. Right, let's. I'm, I don't know if black can win this. Oh, you, oh. I was, I was just make these assumptions, but yeah, of course, um, it might not be that easy to win, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way, right? But I, was, but, oh, I see what you're saying, because he's going to have to sack the g pawn, right? And try to bring the king round here. Yeah. With 20 seconds on the clock, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but are they getting two or three uh, three seconds? They get uh, three, yeah. Piece, piece cake, absolute piece cake. Actually, that rook is beautifully placed. Yeah. Because the king can't cross the D file. What a, what a mad position. How interesting. Maybe it's, I think it's probably just a draw, isn't it? I bet they're not going to agree a draw. I bet someone's going to win this. <laughs> you reckon? I reckon. I oh, that's a big chance. That is a massive chance for Black. Oh, I. I'm expecting a certain move now. I'm expecting a move. I'm trying not to say what it is, but I hope we're thinking the same thing. <laughs> I think we're giving too much away already. All right, let's move on to a different game. Yeah, enough <laughs> as it is. And then, okay, this game's nice checkmate. So well done, White. Cupcake. Um, we'll go through the games at the end then. And then this game ended with checkmate as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm just going to click on the new links to game two. Please do give us your game two links in the chat. So these games are well underway now. Oh, what's happened here? That's um, a problem because of this pawn. Sarah, we're at, we're at five past three now. I don't know if, if you want to do okay. you want to keep going or it, another five minutes or so. What so do you want to take? Because yeah, we do need to finish um, at quarter past four. So I think when you finish your game, um, go because they've they've just started new games. So should we yeah. just put the break back a bit? But we will definitely finish the session at quarter past. Is that okay? Sensible? Yeah, that's fine. So we'll, we'll just so we'll finish these games first and then take it from there. Yeah. Okay. Finish these games. We might be another ten minutes, and then we'll give you a fifteen-minute break, and yeah. then the, the second session might be shorter. Okay. Um, That's fine. That's all good. We're all having too much fun. Who needs breaks? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I want to see how those other games finished. Yeah. That was. That was, that was this was. Oh, they're still going. Oh, we've got to keep it on this. <laughs> oh wow. That's that's a big change. It is definitely like black. <laughs> uh, that's game over, isn't it? I think so. Mm. Yeah, don't start a game free, Charlie. Um, just just watch my screen now because we're going to take a break after this. I think he's he's taken on. Um, the theme from from my last session <laughs> Dan dangerous kid is going for stalemate ah. <laughs> i'm not sure it's in this one but anyway <laughs> oh 
Ooh, actually, <laughs> no, <laughs> not not yet. <laughs> I think I think Blight will be able to trap me here. <laughs> Sorry, <think> Kenneth. So <laughs> But there is still mate. You never know. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Oh, risky, risky move. No check. Okay, you two. If you do your second game uh, shorter time control, that would be great. Just so we um, manage yeah. our fifteen minute break. So maybe go for what do you say, three, three one or something? Is that right, Danny? Yeah, yeah, three one. Yeah, fine. And then when everyone's finished their second game, don't start a third because we are going to take a break when everyone's finished their second game because we're already seven minutes over our break. But that's fine. We'll take it when people are finished. Um, right, any exciting games going on? Okay. Oh, I wanted to see what happened in that. Harry's. Oh, yeah, Harry won that game, didn't he? Where's the second game they're playing? So many links here, which is great. Thanks for sending them across. So they have, they've rematched now. So let's see if I can find the second game. Harry, did you give me your link to your second game? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think it's that one. Okay, so this is the second game. And this time, Harry is white. Oh, wow. It's gone, gone queenside. Yeah. Now, I'm worried for white's king safety, if I'm honest. <laughs> this looks... Ooh. Ooh. But then we've got some. Got to calculate. Suppose, yeah. That was just played so instantly. I just assumed he'd blundered his night. Okay, this this does look very, very fishy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts going on, aren't there? Yeah. Thanks for the link, Frankie. That's brilliant. That game. I oh, know that's the old game. Can you show me the link to your new game that you're playing? Please. Unless. Let's keep. Let's keep our eyes on this one. <laughs> Ah, I've got a nice idea for black now. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I don't know whether it works, but... Yeah, that, that was my thought as well. Yeah. Oh, very, very nice. I think Frankie. it's break time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one... Wow, how on earth did they get that? <laughs> Let's have a look. Cupcake is white. Oh yeah, I've might made a mistake here, and then Black's pushing pawns yeah. down the board. Oh, this bishop isn't very happy. Remember, my old mm, coach used to say, "Talk to your pieces." I'm expecting this now, or something, but. I, th I think there are going to be strong words <laughs> if you talk about <laughs> pieces here. <laughs> oh, at least we managed to get rid of that bishop because that bishop was causing some Yeah, e even so, it looks... You'd imagine that should be good for black, but that's not, that was not so clear again. I thought it, it did look like it was winning, didn't it? But yeah, I think G, G3 was probably winning, wasn't it? Because was it just, yeah, they take it, the, the, the moment passed very quickly. Check, yeah. Mm. but now I'm not sure because I'm not sure how safe Black's King is but these pawns are certainly dangerous <laughs> Oof. okay let's go to a different game we've seen this one I see how dangerous Kid's getting on in his second game I don't think I've got the link so I'll just have to manually find it okay. And then make sure you don't play another game. And after 
you finish this match, which will be shortly, we will take a break. Um, okay, they're playing there. This is a much faster game. Uh, oh. Okay, so White's the exchange ahead, but it's a big bishop. Seems to be the theme with these two. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Kenneth. Link. Don't know. Just it does look better for white, doesn't it? I do like white. Yeah. Yep, that's what I was thinking. Rook D one. <laughs> I think looks like the end of the show to me. Okay, so if you have finished your second game, um, you can start your break now. Uh, I think we'll take the break officially at quarter past, so we'll, we'll come back at half past. Um, if you're happy with that, Danny. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have the final session just as a 45 minute session. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll um, we'll go through some of these games. Yeah. And then I want to show what happened in the actual game. Um, but yeah, some some interesting stuff here. Yeah, because they might be able to do the. Um, the original training position like because i did it wrong as maybe a shorter game we might have time to do like i don't know three one for that yeah position. yeah well we'll we'll see if yeah, we can fit yeah. it in we, there might be too much to look at but yeah <laughs> there always yeah. is that's yeah because actually i think this position is yeah it's definitely worth considering mm. Yeah, we had a, a John M session um, the other week and he said, but I want them to do the training game before I tell them anything. <laughs> and that was quite interesting. So um, like I say, you haven't seen the game based on this because I gave you yeah. back the wrong link. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Um, oh, checkmate here. <laughs> oh, hello. I thought the king was over here. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I was I like, there? Bacon. Yeah, it was over there, wasn't it? So it looked like it, it should have been mate on that side. I thought of the it board. was going to be just a mate, but uh, Ooh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but rook c two now. That's mad. Oh no, because we got f five. Oh, yeah, so okay, so we just kept with the force. Oh yeah, but maybe now we take. With I think it was forcing queen. anyway. Yeah. Okay. Is it all forced? Yeah. Ah, oh, let's see. Maybe he's just going to tell me he calculated it all. <laughs> <laughs> very good okay so those two had some epic battles so Kush and Harry you can take a break now come back at half past and okay. anyone else that's finished um, yeah I think most of the games are finished now uh, that's yeah okay take a break everyone and we'll see you back at half past perfect I'll put the kettle on yeah same <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you half past okay, all right bye. great stuff bye very often you know white is playing a pawn to c3 in these kind of positions so this has a special, you know, typical, there, there are kind of different rules here. Um, now, white played the bishop back to h4. Um, okay, let's stop right there. Because this is already quite an important moment in the game. Um, what's black's best move here? I mean, this pin is actually very annoying. It's really annoying. You know, you haven't got, if you could play the bishop back through the pawn on d6 to e7, exactly. Um, that's a different story. So I think in the game, let's just, should we just roll on a little bit? Just, we can see just what happened here. I think, white, I think white played an excellent move, queen d2. So that means if g5, you can just take it. Yeah. He's preparing. To yeah. yeah. And now I, th I think black is in massive trouble. Queen d2 is a really good move. Also prepares castles queenside if, if necessary as well. So when bishop g4. Yeah. Um, can black maybe go bishop e6 just to try and. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let stick bishop e6 on the board. Yeah. Now I'd like to ask for suggestions. What can White play here? Any thoughts? Yep. Yeah, just. Oh yeah, if you want to be unmuted, Charlie, because it's your game, that's no problem. Oh yeah, yeah. Please. Sorry, um, any any thoughts for for White in this position? 
yeah, tell us in the chat or you can raise your hand. Harry, is your hand raised from earlier or did you want to say something? Just let me know. I'm happy to. I'll, okay, I'll lower your hand, Harry, but if you want to put it up again, if you want to speak now, that's fine as well. Okay, it's gone back up. So you want to say something? That's fine. Oh, sorry, Danny, I accidentally unmute, uh, muted you. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> You've been muted, Danny. Sorry, just um, you should be able to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I was trying to unmute Harry because he wanted to be unmuted. Right, Harry, what did you want to say? Can't hear you. You need to. Um, I it was accidentally because I wanted to lower my hand, but you'd already done it, so it was going back up. Yeah. Okay. I, listen, I, it's Charlie. Charlie's playing white here, right? Yeah. So yeah. he can speak. If so, can... so can we can we have a word from Charlie? Charlie, after Bishop E six, what do you think you play here? I'm I'm interested in this. Um, I don't want to take because uh, that means I can't get my knight to D five, which is something I want to do. Very true. Yeah. Good. Yeah, um, let's, maybe. Let's just, Sarah, can we just see that very quickly? If bishop takes bishop, yeah, that pawn covers d5, gives black the open f5. Basically, there's no problem with the pin either because that, you know, the, the knights, yeah, queen e8, exactly. And actually, I think black is fine there, more, more than fine. So, yeah, I agree, that's a mistake. So, if I was going to do anything, I'd probably go um, bishop b3 and maybe try and get a ghost. You know, not a ghost attack, an X ray on his. Um, basically, basically, I just want to put some pressure on his pawns because okay. it, it doesn't have to do anything and I can maybe get an attack on it. I think bishop b3 is okay. I wonder, there's a couple of things. First of all, what about knight d5? That was what I was looking at, but then I thought, then I'm just taking all of my pieces and swapping them off. And it's well, quite, I, I prefer my position. Well, not really, because okay, he's got to take it. You take with the bishop, of course, you don't want to block that bishop in. And you've just, that is the key piece, that light square bishop. It is mm. such a beautiful piece. It hasn't got an opponent. He's got problems breaking the pin. You can it's always just- It's really annoying. How does black? I mean- well, I had this the next game we played. I got my bishop there. Exactly this position. Uh, not exactly the same, yeah. um, but I, I basically got, got my bishop to d5 and kind of thingied. I think this is incredibly strong because you still have that pin. Um, so that is what I would consider here. And actually, instead of knight d5, there's another move I would consider, which is a bit bonkers, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Bishop d5? I, no, g4. You see, with that pawn on h6... Look. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. perfect, nice. I can crack open the G file. I'm going to G1. Exactly. And black could be completely lost here. Now, I think the only way to exploit that is by playing bishop takes G4. But then I was thinking, maybe we just give the knight. I, no, who are you going to do? Take the knight? I'll take the knight. Oh, uh, said. I didn't hear you. No, no I, 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 I dropped the knight. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, I wanted rook g1. I thought that's what yeah, you Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because then queen h6 and it's over. Uh, or not over. over. It oh, could God. be over. It could be. Oh, could, very... Can't I, can't I sack? No, maybe not because it's defended by the rook gun. No, let's play queen h6. Come on. Let's, let's oh, yeah, play. queen h6. Well, and he can't like even that. go, he can't go g6 because no. the pawn on f7 is. Rook G6 mates, yeah. No, no, sorry. He, well, I was going to say he can't go G6 because. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, mate. Rook, it's mate. Yeah. Rook G6 mate. The uh, only thing I can think of here is if he plays. Can he play Knight G4? And just take with the Rook, right? Uh, then Bishop takes. Mm. Bishop takes Rook. Yeah, and then both queens are attacked. So it's not. Uh, I think that's that's What's a the bit material? Iffy. Sorry. What's the material like here? White's a rook down, mm -hmm. and and the queen's on priest. Well, oh, I think great. Um, okay, <laughs> just just don't don't take don't play rook takes knight. No. We can do we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Um, well, I I mean I can think of a good move. Oh yeah, I've seen something as well. Anyone want to tell us in the chat? Maybe. Maybe take the queen, and then if he takes, 
then you go bishop f6. Uh, oh. You are a piece down, but maybe it doesn't matter. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Kenneth mentioned uh, the possibility of queen g6, but then he decided it probably wasn't that good because I think we can take the queen, a, queen h4. Yeah, I was I was thinking queen h5. So were you thinking shirt, sir? Yeah, yeah, just to keep that defended and yeah. putting more pressure on f7. Um, yeah, this is messy, isn't it? Well, it might just be winning for white, mm. um, unless black comes up with something pretty fast. Yeah, I love White's position. I love these attacking positions. <laughs> yeah. Only thing is, what about what about Queen D seven? Queen D seven. Yeah, that so, might be a bit annoying. It's all right. We can cope with that. Uh, let's think. Can we? Of You're very confident. Yeah, I like, <laughs> like these positions, but it's probably rubbish. Um, it's H three, but yeah, yeah. yeah I was thinking low, maybe just H three. Yeah. Have we got anything better? But maybe just yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, might might just be good enough. Just take it. Okay, so G four is is of course um, like could could be over the top, but you know I think in, instead of G four, Knight D five is from a positional point of view is really sensible, and after in that position with Knight D five takes takes, we Sorry. haven't <laughs> by, by the way we haven't forgotten about G four, because in the, in this position now G four is absolutely killing, mm. so I think this is simply good for White. If we just go back a few moves, right to the start. Like all the way here. Uh, so after Bishop H4. Yeah. So black castled. And I think castling is a massive mistake because of queen D2. And obviously after queen D2, black can't play G5 because of knight takes G5. Maybe you should play bishop b4, and then he stops my knight d5 ideas, which stops my getting the bishop there idea. Yeah, but but after bishop b4, you know, worst case, you could just play a3 and, you know, you claim the bishops. Mm, um, yeah. you know, that, that's a long-term positional advantage. I really like it. Now, I think castles is a mistake, but, but I agree. I, th I think uh, bishop b4 is, in that position, absolutely necessary. Yeah, Rahul, do you want to say anything? You can speak if you want to. You might not want to say anything, but you can unmute yourself and say stuff if you want to make any comments. It's a tricky position to play, and it's really good to understand how to play these positions. Yeah, I just couldn't really think of anything much else to do apart from castle. I thought castling would be okay. Yeah, I think queen d2 is, is just a good move, but let's let's put the position back off in, after bishop h4. Okay, yeah, sure. So let's go here. I think black has a much, much stronger move. And in fact, I think bishop h4 is a mistake. Maybe knight e5. Knight where? A5. Oh, knight a5. Um, knight a5. Can you play... Can you play knight d5 then? Isn't that a problem? Then maybe g5 or... Take it. <laughs> exactly. Definitely. Well... Well, really? Yeah. If, if you if black played g5, what would you do here? Yeah, knight takes g5, knight takes d5. It's not so clear. Um, yeah, then, then, well, let, then what do you look. do? Okay, right. let's have a look. So knight d5, knight. Aha. Uh -huh. Wait a second, wait a second. This queen is... h5. Yeah, queen h5 here. Uh -huh. Oh, this is... Gotcha. <laughs> wait, what do you do? That... That's great, um, actually. Everything's defending bishop b6. You can just take it. The, the only thing is like queen e no or queen queen e seven or maybe pro probably queen f six get defends the pawn and the oh that looks oh defends the rook yeah yeah no, oh. surely not um let's go with something else what should we knight f three knight f three knight f three yeah. and then and then we take yeah then we take the knight yeah exactly unless knight f four <laughs> Not over. No, we we take what the rook. I'm, I'm going to be attacking your rook, right? Yeah, we take the rook. Oof. Still not completely over. <laughs> but that bishop is trapped. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, because then maybe knight takes c4 and then f6. Oh, okay. Try it. Go on. So, so knight, knight takes c4. Okay. Yeah, yeah, takes. And then f6. 
Okay, now what's the score? Time. Right, we need to Okay, we're going to have two pawns for it, which isn't bad. He can't really get his knight to g6 and protect it because he's just king f7. King f7, yeah, very true. Harry says g4. I think bishop takes g4 is a bit annoying. Yeah. Uh, no, g4 uh, bishop takes and then rook, rook g1. Rook g1. And then, then you're winning something. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, that's not that clear, actually. Gosh, oh, it, sorry. We've just played a whole game. <laughs> oh, gosh. this is Yeah, rook g1. Right, rook, so rook in, <laughs> <laughs> oh my word this is just this is because now the bishop's probably gonna get out well maybe all well, having a, a simple italian game wow i love yeah. italian. that was that was crazy okay let's go back right let's go back but well, maybe I'll yeah that, that was too mad for words yeah um so uh, listen knight, knight a5 is definitely interesting um but I think there's a much sounder move here for black. A much sounder move. What can black play here? Let somebody suggest a move for black, please. I don't know if anyone had this on the board, actually. I actually don't know what you're thinking of, so I'm not sure. Um, G5, knight d4. G5. I'm oh, sorry, G5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we had that in some games, definitely. G5 in this particular position is fine for black because black hasn't castled. That's the point. Mm. So the bishop's got to go back to G3. And then you could follow up with, well, uh, I think knight H5 is quite interesting. Um, but there's also just bishop E6 as well. You know, one simple idea is to just play the queen to d7 or e7 and castle queenside. Yeah. Um, so the black king is safe. And actually, that expansion on the king side is quite nice. You know, if white goes king side, then that pawn storm looks really good when there's a bishop on g3 as a target. So actually, if we go right back to the start, I think it's a mistake to play bishop h4. Okay. Because it encourages g5. If black had castled, then, I mean, g5 is a massive mistake, of course. But with the king in the middle, that's a complete different scenario. So actually, after h6, the best move is to play bishop takes knight. Now, normally, as I've said, I, you know, I prize my bishops. You should respect your bishops. In this case, I think you can get away with it. Bishop that, in one knight, game. knight d5. Yeah, I was going to say, Sarah, are there are there any games? Yeah, we saw have? it in one game. I think I've. You guys can remind me in the chat, but I think it was um, was it Dangerous Kid and Frankie? Um, I'll go. I'll scroll through them, but it's easier if you tell me because <laughs> you'll know more. Than me. Frankie, did you have this? Just let us know in the chat. But I think where was it? Otherwise, I'm just going to go through the game. So we had Bishop b3 in that game. This game we had that one. Here we had um, Kushal. Kushal said it's his second game. Ah, yeah. Um, this, was, this was the first time I saw it. So it was um, Kenneth played it. So well done, oh. Kenneth. Okay. So Bishop takes knight. And then knight d5. So should we get them to speak as well if they want to? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And Frankie, you should be able to speak now if you want to say anything, as this was your okay. game. Okay, Charlie, I'm going to mute you if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, this was a really interesting game. Danny and I were really focused on this game at the end. But... Yeah, I think I think it was a draw, but um. Okay, but but let's deal with this position because this is really important. So the knight comes to d five. Now you can only get away with giving up your bishop for a knight if you get something for it. And in this position, white has some initiative, and I think the really important move he played next was pawn to c three. And that's the best yeah. in this position. Well, I play, I don't play bishop d5. I play the knight to d2 and back to f1, that kind of thing. I know, so but like, I, I normally play c3, not knight c3. Right. Okay. That's a different story. But, but this is actually quite an interesting variation. Um, you know, black is under a bit of pressure here. So what did. Um, 
so Frankie went bishop g4 now. Right. So he wants d4, so yes. I've got to stop that. Very true. That Very true. I think my only qualm with bishop g4 is... Can he play h3? Yeah, yeah. I thought about this. Because, you know, you don't really want to give up your bishop for the knight. Mm. So presumably you'd have to play, let's say, bishop h5. Okay, now, what can white do here? <laughs> yeah, g4. Yeah, I think it gives white some initiative. So after this, the bishop goes back. Now, we haven't got knight h4, but we could play h4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, what, um, and I guess I guess White's king is going to go uh, queenside here. It's I mean, fun for White. <laughs> yeah, but it, it might not be too bad for Black. I mean, uh, if Black castles kingside, that's kind of crazy. No chance. Yeah, yeah but but you can go queenside. So actually, I, I don't think it's too bad. So perhaps queen d seven in this position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think I was going to try and play on the queen side. I didn't want to weaken yeah. the king immediately, especially because I haven't developed my queen yet, and I kind of thought I wanted to go king side. Oh, really? Well, actually, I think this, but I think this is okay for white. I think white should play like this. I mean, what I would do is play h5 here. So the bishop drops. And then g5, maybe. Uh, I wasn't sure about g5. Knight h4. Yeah, I like. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that makes sense. Although I don't know because do we want to put the knight on h5? Then? Yeah, I'm not sure actually. I I was just thinking playing just rook g1 here actually. Yeah. Because like what I, what I want to do as white is basically I want to hold the king side, um, and if black goes queen side. I think white's king is okay in the middle, and then you can play b4, a4. Yeah. I think that's actually very dangerous. Mm -hmm. so white is white is secure in the center, and you can turn your attention to whichever side black's king lands on. Yeah, but I did I was a bit worried because I didn't want to push too many pawns just because it there are weaknesses and like I didn't think. I could immediately win, and I now have space advantage, but I, I didn't think it was worth it. Well, the thing is, actually, where are the weaknesses in White's pawn structure? Somewhere like G4. Well, it's protected. <laughs> I don't think there are actually many weaknesses in White's pawn structure. I think White's got a lovely pawn structure. And if I'm actually secure with the king in the middle, then it gives you a chance to expand. Yeah, so, my only break is f5, and I can never do that. Exactly. Frankie, you've you've hit the nail on the head, basically. And so I can't really take advantage of that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I I think black has to be quite careful here. Yeah. Um listen, let's go back. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So we've got lots of games to go through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we've discussed this idea of putting the knight on d5. To taking and c3 bishop g4 okay let's so let's quickly see what happened now white went a4 threatening mm -hmm. to win a piece yeah so a5 rook b1 wow um i'm not sure about that move are you danny well the only thing is i'm not quite sure where white's king is going now you see yeah. in this position i know it's really delicate balance i would want to see whether i could still I have the option of casting queenside. Mm, that's quite risky. Uh, listen, I'm I'm not saying it should be played, um, but I want to have that option. It's yeah. all about options because it. You see, neither side has committed the king yet, so I want to keep that open. And it keeps your opponent scared, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Just keep keeps black guessing basically. So that's why I'm not sure about rook b1 actually. If white's king has got to go to the king side. That pin could be actually quite annoying. So I would want to hold the option open. Okay, let's let's see how things went. Yeah, bishop h5, very good. I, I would be tempted to play g4 there for white, actually. Come on, Kenneth, you're a dangerous kid. Yeah, I was more <laughs> worried about g4. Yeah, because here, 
as, as Frankie said earlier, if black can't get in the break F5, then let's just keep going, H4. It's actually very dangerous, even, even now. Mm -hmm. same, same story, I want to play H5 for, for white, Rook G1 and G5. And the queen, you know, maybe on D2. Yeah, that's quite scary. Yeah, it is, because I don't see where uh, Black's counterplay is coming. I think casting kingside is a mistake. Yeah, maybe it was a bit early. I could just develop the pieces. Exactly, you should hang back. And I think instead of all this, we go right back to castle's kingside. Um, yeah, where before Black played castle's kingside. Here, I would get rid of the knight on d5. Maybe knight e7, c6. Exactly, I would play knight e7 and exchange it off. Um, because that's the really dangerous piece. Also supports f5 later, if d6 and the knight moves back. Yeah, like potentially. Three. I mean, that's obviously an option, but I think, anyway, the, the first thing to do is, is to deal with the knight on d5. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a really strong piece. Uh, and also, you're not committing your king yet. I think that's the, the really key thing here. Yeah. You know, because the center is still closed. So, you know, you can actually afford to take your time. You know, it's, it's not pressing that you have to castle. Okay, let's crack on with the game. Yeah, let's crack on. Yeah. So, um, it was a long game, so we should yeah. just um, blitz through it because they didn't have much time anyway. But um, <laughs> now G4 was eventually played here. G4, now it's scary with White's king on G1. But li listen, let's see what I happens. Yes, he was worried about knight D4. Yeah, fair enough. But then again, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice square. I do you know what, Frankie? I'd have kept that bishop. Yeah, you, you, you've got to value your bishops. Mm -hmm. You know that is a beautiful piece. You you should keep it definitely. Yeah, yeah. even even though I I can't see where you're breaking, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a pity to exchange it off because now now I quite like white. I have to say, what about knight takes d four? Yeah, he did that. Well done. Yeah, I think it's better for white now. Yeah, it looks fun for white. Because <laughs> the bishop on g6 is just out of play. Yeah, yeah, that's really bad piece, isn't it? Yeah. Unless black can get d5 in at some point. Oh, no, not not <laughs> not, not, not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think Kenneth's played that bit really well. Yeah, very nice. Um, All right, b6 is a good move. You had to play that. Yeah. Wait, is it queen a4? What if I just take on hit the pawn? What's happening? Is I see. Is that what the computer suggested? Yeah, I mean, I I don't like putting the engine on sometimes. Just... Obviously, yeah, but like. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you why. I tell you why it wants to do that. Queen a4 takes on a5, b5. That's uh, yeah. The, that's oh, yeah. the idea. And and here, well, okay. If queen b6, then basically one rook six. Exactly. White is going to tempo and actually. Um, that might be... That's quite scary. Without a knight to dislodge the queen and block the pawn, it looks pretty bad. Rook, rook, rook c6 just looks great for white, because if rook c7, you chop it off and play b6. I thought yeah. I had a good attack with the b pawn, but I couldn't really find a way, yeah. a way through. Uh, I, I, think I, I, I think I had about 30 seconds, so I was trying to make a few quick moves. Yeah, yeah, well, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah they both. Yeah, they both not got much time. But queen a four is a difficult move to see, but it is a very strong move because it because it basically just gains a tempo. Because after you exchange, you can see, I mean, in the game rather, yeah. then actually black has managed to um, coordinate, and it's basically a tempo ahead on that. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking, Danny. Now we should probably move on to the other game, so we don't go. Yeah, yeah sorry, we we took up a lot of time, but but, but actually, um, yeah. thank you, Charlie. Really interesting game. Yeah, we really mm -hmm. enjoyed looking at the end. Actually, Danny and I were like, "Oh, what's going on?" Yeah, um, it looked interesting that position. So, um, yeah, let's make sure everyone gets some time. So let's go to um, Rowan against Rohit. I think Danny and I really liked this game. Um, so White started with Bishop E3. Yeah. Um, which is, well, listen, it's better than going back to h4. 
seriously. <laughs> um, even though White has kind of lost a tempo, um, it's a sensible move, you know. Yeah, there's an argument for Sorry. playing it to, to, to there straight away. Anyway, let's see what happened. Yeah, so you two can speak if you want to say anything about the game. I've unmuted you. Okay, so who's okay. this? This is... So this is uh, Rowan playing maybe White. Maybe E3 because, Rowan, I did, because I thought my bishop was a bit passive on H4. Yeah, That's... I agree. After G5, it's in a bad position. Yeah, because I, I thought if I'm bishop h4, you can do g5, and it yeah. doesn't destroy his king center because his king is still in the middle. So I thought, what if he develops his pieces? So then he's going to castle onto the yeah. queen side. Rohan, you're absolutely right. Um, because black's king is in the middle, then bishop h4, g5, as we've been talking about, is actually fine for black. So okay. bishop b3 is okay in that sense. Bishop takes knight is probably the best move on knight d5, but. Okay. Okay, so... good. Right, bishop g4. Don't panic. Yeah, because I thought I, I couldn't move queen to d. I wanted to move queen mm. to d2 really badly, but then he could. Because, but then he could do uh, bishop takes f3. I have to take g3 otherwise i'm a piece down um and i and i and if he did that i was quite scared because his pieces are not active uh, to get my king but it would only be a short time of moves till he gets to my king and then i and it would take my pieces a very long time to defend mm. i only have my minor pieces to defend and one mm. major piece yeah do you know what i don't think you should have castled I think castling is premature because bishop g4 is a problem now, isn't it? You know, in that sense, bishop b6 was a very craft, crafty move from Rohit. It is Rohit, isn't it? Yeah, it's Rohit, yeah. Yeah. I think I should have, like, moved queen to d2 or something. I agree. I think queen d2 is a good move. Because then I, uh, then I can castle queen side. The point is you give yourself the option. Yeah, to castle yeah. queen side. Exactly. Because if they attack on the king side, I can castle queen side. But um, and if they attack queen side, then I can castle king. Yeah, it's very and subtle, isn't it? And maybe before that, I might as well have played h three. You could so also play h three in this position. And h three sets a little trap. <laughs> because if you play h three, black castles. I know what you're yeah. going to say. <laughs> Black castles, then you go bam g4, <laughs> rip open his yeah. king position. <laughs> then you've got rook g1 and g5. Do you see what I mean? Do you see how castling is you know the timing of casting in these positions is absolutely key? And black gets it wrong here, and you got it wrong in the game. It's really subtle, you know, just tiny differences makes a massive difference in the game. Okay, great. So um, once we've covered the opening, we'll probably move on to the other games. Yeah, okay. Finish on time. So um, yeah, I think Danny's saying some amazing stuff here and I'm I'm learning some things as well because I like I like to play C3, not Knight C3. So this is really interesting. I um, wanted him to take my E, e my Bishop on E3 so then mm. I can take with my F2 pawn and at least oh. my knight has some, some support from my rook. Definitely. Yeah. If, if Bishop takes E3, then actually... Yeah, F two. Yeah, I'm, I do have the slight chance. No, you you have a nice position. In fact, we had that with colours reversed in was it Charlie's game? I yes, think. I think it was. Well, we yeah, Charlie got a way. brilliant attack. Absolutely perfect play. I really loved and it. All of it. that just in the Spanish. <laughs> uh, well, it's not a, it's not a Spanish. It's Joker piano. It's Joker it? piano. Yeah. Yeah, but but you do get similar things in the Spanish as well, of course. You know, they're, they're really similar positions. Yeah. Okay, let's rattle through. Yeah, let's, let's go on because we haven't given Archie and Jacob any time. We need to okay. Give them as well as Harry and Cushel. So the knight went to d5 now. Um, okay, let's let's keep going. Okay. Yeah. Queen f6. Nice. Then we had this end game. Yeah, in fact. And I thought I could move my king to h2 because he doesn't have, well, he does have a black square bishop, but it's a long way for, away from my king. He would have to move his knight away, move his pawn. You and know what? I think, Sarah, we both felt this was okay for, for white, didn't we? 
Yeah, because we were, let's just move on a bit. We were um, discussing who we preferred here and we were sort of thinking it was equal. And then when the porn went to F5, I sort of said, well, I, I like white and you agreed that you preferred yeah, white. Yeah, we, we both went, yeah, well, I like white here. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, uh, even instead of F5, if I think white can I feel take... I like I should have done. Uh, you can yeah. just take, you can just take. Yeah, I was thinking, but kind of, I thought he could take with the knight and defend. D4? Uh, yeah. F seven drops. Looks pretty good for white to me. You know, I love those that clump of pawns in the middle of the board. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Looks looks better for white, I think. Love loving the bishop and the rook. Yeah, and it was a nice idea, Rowan, of getting the open G file and moving your king to H two. It was really nice. Yeah. Nice yeah. Played, but I think Rovit played very well as well. Um, it was so let's see the game. Okay, so then F5 was played. And then this was the point where we were looking at it, Danny, and um, you were saying it's a big moment for Black. Where was it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a big moment for Black, and you were saying, oh, what's he going to play? Instead of night before, let me show you my awesome. idea. I have a, I had a sneaky idea. I still think it might be... Yeah, if you go back. Okay. okay in this it. position, I thought knight E7. Mm. So the bishop goes back, right? Yeah. So B3. Yeah. No, knight, knight, knight G8. You see, I thought that knight should live on F6. Um, and I didn't think it was too bad for black because then you could play C6 and D5. And black is very stable there. Yeah, what do you think, Rohit, about that idea? Yeah, I probably should have played that. I love the knight on f6. You know, it's basically it's very hard for white to attack because you know with the with the pawn on f5 blockaded. I think I could have done like about d4, d4 maybe In before position? he does no before he does knight f6. Okay, before so he does, yeah. Where, whoa, what happened? <laughs> um, where are we? Right. Uh, like when we were in the get end game, yeah, when he. You said when before he moves knight f6, like when he was on knight g8. Okay, go. Oh, hang on. We looked at. Yeah, so in, instead of knight b4. Yeah, knight b4, we went so back. So knight e7. Yeah. Bishop b3. Knight g8. Knight g8. So don't think. I thought I could like do d4 in this position. Well, what happens after knight f6 now? Uh, Look at the e4 pawn. That's a very weak pawn now. I would, I would actually keep that pawn on d3. That's quite serious. Who's better? Uh, black. Black is better. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Well, should we move on to the next game? Yeah, let's move I on. But that's an interesting game. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, because we're, we are, we're running short of time. Yeah, and I haven't given Archie and Jacob any time, so I'm going to come yeah. to you first. But I want to give Archie and Jacob some time because. Great. Um. Can you remind me who's who in this game? Because we've both got really cool names on Lee Chess, but I don't know who's who. <laughs> um, so, Archie, I'm going to uh, make it so you can speak as well. And Jacob, so just remind me who's who for when we go through the game. Uh, I'm white here. And and who's who's I'm white? Oh, Archie, right? Yeah, thanks, Archie. Okay, so Archie's white, and Jacob's black. So um, well, let's just give them some time. So Bishop H4 was played. Uh, we've G5, just... G5. <laughs> So, um, Jacob, the, what Danny's gone through is G5 is the move now. Okay, um, but G, Bishop G4. Ah. Okay. Um, I'm tempted to play H3 here. Um, yeah, that looks... I, I want that bishop. I want it as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what, what happened instead of that? Yeah, Jacob's mic's not working, but um, he's just let us know that. Okay, knight d5 was played. Yeah. Um, g5 now. Yeah, good move. Very good move. Yeah, because really Black's good. king hasn't castled. And then knight h5. Yeah, excellent. Queen e2. Ooh, is that asking for knight d4? Ooh. It's giving nice tempo on the queen. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that looks great for Black. Mm. Um. Black played f5 instead. Risky. Ooh, yeah, knight d4 is the move. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, these Definitely. are only blitz games, so don't worry, but that would have just been great because yeah. you're playing it with tempo, hitting the queen, and you're hitting C2. It looks all fun and games for black. Yeah. Risky. F5, a little bit risky, yeah. <laughs> I think at this point, I was actually considering knight takes E5 and knight takes here and takes... <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy lines, but I don't really know what's going on there. Yeah, I think it's probably... It's probably all right, but it just felt like something was going to fall here. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? I don't know what the move for white now is, but it just felt like white should have a good move here. Well, I think is bishop e5. I think, can, can we do a modified uh, version of that? Yeah, just try a different order. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, basically, I think playing f5 with the king in the middle is obviously really risky because you know, the, the position starts to open up. With white's queen on e2, and you're playing f5, it's kind of inviting a huge tactic, which I think is here, because if pawn takes, we can just play knight takes. Got this. It feels really iffy, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, so yeah, I think f5 was a mistake there. Let's have a yeah. quick look at the game because we are running quite short on time. So f5, um, yeah, we don't like that move. We prefer knight d4. But it is only a blitz game, so it doesn't matter um, what happens. So a3 was played. Maybe, um, yeah, I'm just, I suppose that doesn't work as well now. Okay, a3. Uh, queen d7, h3. White's making quite a lot of pawn moves here. Yeah, I, I realised that, like, the queen and king before to trying to get the distract the knight away from defending f6. Oh, yeah, and you did actually get that nice fork in soon. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, a3 though. A3, quite slow. Yeah, these are quite slow at e3 and then h3. Archie, you could. Archie, you are white, aren't you? Yeah, he's white. Yeah. Bang. Don't, Don't need to mess around with a3. Yeah. If, if you're ever tempted to make those little pawn moves at the side of the board and they don't actually threaten a bishop, then just. Tell yourself, hang on, do I really need to make a, those little pawn moves yeah. at the side of the board? It's, it's rare that they're okay. I mean, threatening a bishop, like if there's a bishop on g4 and you can play h3, that's a different story. <laughs> Completely different story. Because yeah. you're, you're, you're gaining a tempo, or you might be able to take a bishop, or you know, get force an exchange of bishop for knight. But a3 at the side of the board? Yeah. Nah. Sure. Just stop yourself before you make the move. Go, oh, okay, there's got to be something better. Just feels yeah. like there's a good move here with this hanging and the king yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Five being weak. Bang. Bishop e5. Yeah, bishop e5. Um, so yeah, I think we, we might stop there because that's like the opening from that game, and then we can go on to the final okay. two yeah. opponents. Yeah, but well played both of you. There's quite a lot we can learn from that. Um, so now we get back to Harry and Kush. They did have uh, everyone managed to have two games, but we are just going to be looking at the first games due to time restrictions. Now here. Bishop H4. So what should Black play? I'll let them speak as well. So yeah, Kushal, yeah. you should be able to speak. Harry, you should be able to speak as well now. I could have played G5, but I felt like this would be safe opening up the position. More aggressive op op opportunities. Yeah, I mean, G5, I think, is the move. The move you played, Bishop E6, is also very good. I think Bishop E6 is fine. Um, particularly the way the game went, because I think after the exchange then you get exactly what you want. That pawn on e6 does a great job, and you're ready to castle kingside and get some pressure on the f-file. So hang on, who have we got here? We've got... So um, we've got Kush playing white and Harry yeah. playing black. Okay. I would still go g5 instead. But anyway, this is also very reasonable, seems to me. Black castled here. Yeah. And then... Knight. knight a4 that this happened right yes i think that's a good move um it's it's kush right yeah yeah i think getting rid of that bishop is really really important because it's bearing down on f2 so i think that's that's a good move no. oh yeah don't like c4 Maybe you don't. i think you need to address what's happening on the other side of the board, which is potentially quite scary. Um, let's think. Okay, the computer wants bishop g3, which I find a bit weird. 
Yeah, um, I find that weird as well. Um, white to play here. I mean, C3 is obviously better than C4. Um, but... Definitely. Yeah, I agree. C3 at least covers the D4 square. And I mean, potentially later on, you might be able to play D4. Um, and maybe, maybe the knight can come back to D2. I, I agree. C3. I think that's kind of an instinctive move. Yeah, and I think with D4. Yeah, I mean, not immediately. I think it's too unstable. But for example, if black plays as Harry did in the game with Queen E8. Yeah, let's go back to what happened. Um, yeah, good move, I think. No, sorry. Yeah, but sorry, oh, with the port yeah. on C3. Then in this position, knight D2. Ah, oh, yeah, that's nice. Because the queen can't come to h5. I don't know, it just feels a lot more secure. Mm. And, and maybe the knight will travel around to, to e3. Yes. And there's no knight d4, obviously. Yeah, you've... Some... Okay, let's see the game. Okay, yeah, let's get to the game. So um, c4 was played, which we don't like. Queen e8, um, a3. Move. I think that's good because you can move the rook and not worry about your pawn. Um, queen h5. I like that. Harry's on the attack mm. on the H file. Harry on the H file. <laughs> um, B4. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, knight E7. Swinging around to the king side. Not bad. I don't feel like white's got plan here. It feels a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, it depends what's, what's coming next. I think... Um, Yeah, and now, what what did you play? What happened so, next? B5. Oh, yeah, I don't like B5. Maybe C5 instead looks quite good. because of C5, is that possible? Well, maybe not. I don't know. Wow. Like okay, the computer likes it. Yeah, but... I... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a good move. It's uh, a good move. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, when I was thinking about it, I thought we could take on E5, so I'll be honest there. Um, so... Yeah, that, but C5 does definitely works. I mean... After takes, takes, if, if black takes twice on c5, you've got knight e5. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course, that's... Yeah, so that's that's the point. So c5 is actually a good move. Nice. Um, it could be, then, that swinging around to g6 was a mistake in that case. Okay, that's, that's quite subtle, but yeah. This is a common idea, isn't it, to get the knight? Yeah, like but, but C5 is, is a nice break for white. Okay, so instead of B5, um, C5 is, is very yeah. nice. And I suppose it makes sense because you've got a lot of pressure on E5. Yeah. Okay, um, and now... Okay, <laughs> so we, we did say with the other games we wouldn't go into the attack and what happened next. So um, we kind of covered all the points yeah. of that um, opening, which was great. Um, yeah, but, but obviously, I think... Um, you know, Black's got the attack here, so, you know, and Harry broke through, um, which was good. But, yeah, I th again, I think, you know, recognising when to castle, I think that's the kind of the key thing um, and when attacks are on. I can see we're out of time. Yeah, we've run out of time. We've not been able to show you the, the game, but I will send the file out to you. Yeah, um, please. And please do play through the game um, because it's very instructive. Can I just show one position just, oh, yeah, to, of course. just to finish? Okay, you can show oh, your screen now. If I can, just for a bit of fun. Yeah, but well done everyone in those games. I think people found some nice ideas and hopefully you've learned a lot from that. Okay, this, this is a bit silly, but anyway, <laughs> um, let me show this one. So again, it's another problem where it's white to play mating two. Oh, guys, you've got, to, you've got to do lots of hard work this afternoon. Danny's not and, letting you off now. <laughs> and it looks like... You could do this really easily, but in fact, it's not that obvious. White to play and checkmating two moves. How does white do that? Who's going to be first to get it? <laughs> it looks that, I mean, you know, white's a queen, rook, and a bishop up. 
and the king's wandering around. You'd think, oh God, you can checkmate instantly, but it's there's only one way to do it in two moves. Who's going to be the first? <laughs> We've had um, Queen B2 from Harry and Rook D3 from Kenneth. Okay, well, Rook D3, um, if I play here? No, that doesn't work. What about, let me see. I think, I don't think there's a checkmate in one from here. Oh, yeah, because Queen C4 doesn't work, it's King A5, so no. yeah. So not that one. What was the other suggestion? Um, we've had Queen B2 from Harry. Queen B2. And Ravel. Then... King... What happens here? A4. I don't see a mate in one. No, I don't think there is. Um, that doesn't work. And we've got Rook D4 from Archie. Rook d4, then uh, that one. Yes, the king still gets to a5 if you go queen. I know, it's mad. It looks like there should be a checkmate, but there isn't one there. Rook e5 from Charlie. Rook e5, that's very subtle. <laughs> introduces the bishop into the game. Um, if I play b5, I, I that. don't think there's a checkmate in that position. Not, not immediately. Not that one. Oh, no correct answer yet, guys. No, come on. Who's the first? Queen this A7 is... from Rohit. Queen A7 from Rohit. Oh, I missed that. Just come through. Oh, you sent it to me privately, actually. But... Ah, okay. Queen A7, Rohit. Congratulations. <laughs> that is the only way to checkmate in two moves. Incredibly. And actually, the reason I selected this is because it involves a pin. <laughs> sort of <laughs> basically if pawn to b5 it's quite sweet because the queen controls these squares and then you play rook d4 mate oh, wow. bishop covers this square queen covers here and if i go back and if king here that's checkmate double discovered and if king, there's one more. Oh, yeah, king here. What's the checkmate? Everybody. <laughs> queen yeah, a4. Well done, yeah, Rahul, well done. Queen a4, brilliant. So queen a, it, it, I mean, it's silly, but queen a7 is the only way to checkmate in two moves. Flag has <laughs> no defense. Okay, listen, thank you, everyone, uh, today. It wasn't an easy session because we were dealing with quite tricky concepts, you know, when when you should play G5, when to hang back, when to castle, when not to castle, should you give up your bishop for the knight? Every position you have to think really, really carefully. And yeah, it's sometimes down to very fine details. 